What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, I'm gonna show you a technique that I call collect, connect, and correct. This is the game plan for every patient you'll ever take care of, as well as every exam you'll ever take. Let's dive in. All right, before we jump into that, let me uh, introduce you real quick to the Respiratory Coach Academy. If you'll check out the link down in the video description below, it's going to take you to my brand new website launching very, very soon. We'll you'll be able to find more information out about each of these courses, my mini courses over formulas and neonatal care and anatomy and different ones, as well as the TMC bootcamp and the CSE bootcamp to aid you along your journey to getting those credentials being the RRT. Check that out when you have time. I'd appreciate it. Uh, let me talk to you about collect, connect, and create correct real quick. This is a, a strategy that is not a new strategy. Uh, I just have more and more figured out that this is where it comes down to when we're talking about critical thinking. And we're talking about answering questions or trying to figure out what's going on with patients that extends beyond just simple recall questions. And so what we see here is uh, every question that you have that is a critical thinking question is going to give you a bunch of different data. Okay, It might give you a diagnosis. It might give you a treatment. It might talk about a procedure that's happening. It may give you a bunch of data, likely going to give you a bunch of data, and then may talk to you about some hazards or likely the hazards are what you're going to need to know associated with the procedure or the treatment that is happening. Okay, and so what I want you to, to really uh, realize here is how all of these play together when we're talking about collecting the information that is given and then using this to connect it so that you can figure out what you need to correct. Okay, so we're going to come back to this in a second, but let's first of all take a look at a practice question here. Immediately following a bronchoscopy during a patient ventilator assessment, you notice peak inspiratory pressures have increased from 28 centimeters of water pressure to 42 centimeters of water pressure, while your plateau pressures have remained unchanged at 24 centimeters of water pressure. Which of the following do you recommend? Insert a chest tube, nasal packing, administer albuterol, or increase the FiO2? Now, we're going to go back here because I want to really talk. This video is not about the right answer. This video is about the strategy and getting to the right answer and how you can use this strategy for other and future uh, exam questions and patient scenarios that you may encounter. Okay. Now, if we go back uh, to this slide right here, then we can start to fill in some of this stuff. Okay. They did not give us a diagnosis. Okay. They didn't give us a diagnosis. They also are asking us, what treatment do you recommend? So this is actually the question right there. So then you say, okay, so procedure, data, hazards. How does all this tie together? Well, let's go back and look here. Bronchoscopy is a key piece that you want to collect. So I'm collecting my pieces now. Bronchoscopy is number one. I also know that I'm on a ventilator because I'm doing a patient ventilator assessment. Very, very important. So bronchoscopy during mechanical ventilation and peak pressures, peak pressures have increased from 28 to 42 centimeters of water pressure. More data. While plateau pressures have remained unchanged. So my plateau pressures haven't changed. So I've got data now and I've got information that I can work with. When we go back over here, we say, okay, the procedure was a bronchoscopy. The data is increasing PIPs with unchanged plateaus. Okay, so the plateau pressures did not change. Now for us right here, for us to figure out what we need to do, we have to put these pieces of the puzzle together. We've collected the data, now it's time to connect the data. So when we think about this, we say, okay, bronchoscopy leading to rising inspiratory pressures, but unchanged plateau pressures. I think back to mechanical ventilation and I think to myself, oh, that's right. When PIPs increase, but plateau stays unchanged, that is an indication of an increasing airway resistance. So I come over here and say, okay, I don't know what the diagnosis is for this patient, but I know with the data that I'm giving, I can diagnose that there's an increase in airway resistance. Now, for that, it brings me back to hazards. Why would a patient following a bronch 
have an increased airway resistance. And from that, we remember that patients are susceptible to developing bronchospasm during and following a bronchoscopy, specifically your asthma patients and Egan's 13th edition, chapter 22, page 460, table 22.6, outlines all of these. So look, there's a lot of all this, this whole, this whole page is all about potential complications associated with a bronchoscopy procedure. So I can tie it back into it though. I know that during a bronch, the patient may have increasing peak inspiratory pressures or increased ventilating pressures which could cause a pneumothorax. If they have a needle biopsy done, it could cause a pneumothorax. So I'm thinking, okay, pneumothorax, we know it can cause bronchospasm, it can cause excessive bleeding, it can cause hypoxemia and hypercapnia. In a nutshell, that was kind of what I'm thinking real quick off the top of my head with a bronchoscopy. Well, of all of this data that I was given, increasing airway resistance, the only one that supports that is bronchospasm which brings me to my treatment. How would you treat bronchospasm causing an increased airway resistance? Well, that's going to bring us to our final answer, which is administer albuterol. Now, if you were looking at this and you were like, well, how come I thought it was going to be to increase a chest tube? Well, chest tube, increasing it or inserting a chest tube would be the correct answer if there was evidence of a pneumothorax. But we don't have a compliance problem present here. We have a resistance problem present. And so that's why it's not increased a chest tube. What if they have epistasis, which is bleeding from the nose, which can be associated with the bron bronchoscopy, but not when your patient is on a ventilator and the bronchoscopy was likely performed um, via an artificial airway. So that's, that's not going to be that's not going to be the answer. There's always one silly answer, and that one's it in this scenario. And then what about increased FiO two? You always have to ask yourself: Do I have data to support increasing FiO two? Do I have anything that says hypoxemia? And the answer to that is no. When we go back here to our data that was given. We were given data that supported an increase in airway resistance. Is hypoxemia a hazard of bronchoscopies? A hundred percent. But there's no data that points to hypoxemia, which is why increasing the FiO2 is not the best answer in this scenario. Now, I'm going to do the same thing, but I want to show you one other thing here. These questions can be presented in various different formats. So when we look here, we see the same thing. Immediately following the bronchoscopy, you notice, you notice the following changes during a patient ventilator assessment. Collecting data here, right? Bronchoscopy, patient on a vent, data. Peak inspiratory pressure pre-28, post-42. That's increased. Plateau pressure pre-24, post-24, stayed unchanged. Same story. What data do I have? Increasing peak inspiratory pressure with, with unchanged plateaus, patients on a vent, following a bronch. Connect the dots. What does the data tell us? Increased airway resistance. What's a hazard? Why is that associated with this scenario? Because the hazard of bronchoscopy is bronchospasm. What should you do? Administer albuterol. Same thing. Now I'm going to change the slide. We're going to flip this just a little bit to show you how similar these questions can be and these scenarios can present and even at the bedside how much this stuff can look alike. I'm going to change it. Doesn't look like I changed it because the only thing that changed is in the table. But again, let's collect the data. Bronchoscopy. Patient on a ventilator. Pre-bronch, 28 simmers of water pressure for our peaks, 42 for our post, increase in pips, fantastic. Plateau pressure, 24 pre, 38 afterwards, increasing plateau pressures. Now, I've got my data, now connect it. What is the data telling me? Well, ventilated patient following a bronch, I've got worsening compliance, 
evident by my, by my increasing plateau pressures. My airway resistance now is, is remained unchanged because the difference between these two is four. So my, this is not an airway resistance scenario now. Now this is a, is a static compliance scenario. And now I go back to my hazards of mechanical ventilation and I go, bronchospasm? Well, yeah, but that, would ca that wouldn't cause my plateaus to go up. And so it can't be bronchospasm. So is it epistasis? No, because they're on a vent. Maybe is it hypoxemia? They didn't even give me any information about my oxygenation status. Are they likely hypoxemic if they have a worsening compliance? Perhaps, but did they tell us any of that data to make that decision absolutely concrete? They did not. So now you're thinking, oh, that's right. If my plateau pressures are increasing, and that is, is equal, that, that's the same. That's telling me that I have a worsening static compliance. So this could be a pneumothorax. Now that I have have a, a diagnosis of decreasing compliance pointing to a hazard associated with bronchoscopy, I know that the appropriate answer here is to increase and insert a chest tube. None of these other ones are going to help in this situation or are definitely not indicated in this situation. So I want to go back to this slide right here. I'm going to leave you with this. Collecting the information you have. You got to know what is important. Connect the dots. Correct the problem. That's the name of the game. And you never know which of these you're going to get. It's not going to be all five of them. The question lies somewhere in here, but to understand that, 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 that all of these, all of these tie together, the question is there somewhere. When you study, study how what you learned last semester applies to what you're learning this semester. If you're in your disease class right now, then study how does a diagnosis tie to treatment and how does that tie to potential hazards and what data will help me get to that diagnosis? What signs and symptoms point to the diagnosis so I can then get to the treatment, which may be take me down the road of hazards, which means I may need to do something different. That's the name of the game. So remember, uh, collect, connect, and correct. Sounds simple, and it really is. So I'm Respiratory Coach. Hey, right here on YouTube, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button, the like, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about this video. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, Respiratory Coach at TikTok and Instagram. Joe Lewis on LinkedIn. Send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. And remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.